Hard cider squeezed from wild apples in the Northeast Kingdom. Alyssa Borden takes us to Craftsbury for some fall flavors. Changing leaves and ice cold apple cider. Sure signs of fall in Vermont, but on this Craftsbury farm, hard cider is always in season. A blend of um, apples and pears, and this is for my pear cider that I make. Cedar Hannon is the owner of Wild Branch Cider, a 15-year hobby turned business. In 2019, Hannon ordered 120 apple trees in anticipation of starting up a retirement cider operation. But when they arrived in the midst of the pandemic, those plans changed. In the spring of uh, 2020, I was planting my trees, and by the time I was done planting them, I decided that um, I didn't want to be doing computer work anymore, which is what I had done for 24 years. I enjoyed being outside, enjoyed working in the dirt, enjoyed pressing apples, picking apples, basically just uh, doing anything other than sitting in front of a computer. Those trees are just now maturing enough to produce fruit, but that hasn't stopped Hannon. do a lot of foraging, so about a third of all the apples I use are wild apples. Mm -hmm. Um, I have a lot here on my property. Wild apple trees love to grow in old pastures, so there's a lot of, a lot of pastures, a lot of farmland around here. Five years ago, Hannon made his first batches to sell, and when those initial batches came out pretty well, he took it another step further. I submitted my cider to the Great Lakes International Cider and Perry Competition, which is kind of like the Cider Olympics. It's the largest cider competition in the world, uh, and it won a gold medal. So at that point, I felt like it might work. I might be able to do this. And he has done it, turning out about a thousand gallons of cider each year. It starts with the fruit, finding apples best suited to be squeezed. Some bitterness to them, maybe a little bit more more acidity, not not necessarily as palatable as a uh, as an eating apple. But they have wonderful properties for cider making. They're ground up, wrung out, and the juice is poured into tanks to ferment. For the most part, it's a one-man show with Hannon tackling bottling, labeling, and selling, too. It's a very, very small uh, production, um, even by Vermont standards. He offers a few varieties of cider, from his classic spinny to others made with different fruits, or those done in collaboration with other alcohol makers, like Bar Hill. But beyond product and profit at Wild Branch, Hannon has a broader hope for cider's role in Vermont agriculture. A cider can play a part in filling in the gap where dairy is, is leaving off in terms of the economic stimulus and also just sort of the landscape and keeping the land open and productive. Locally made libations forging a new front in the ag economy. For the Channel 3 News, I'm Melissa Borden, made in Craftsbury, Vermont.